everyone this is rose from jewelry designs by rose thank you so much for watching my channel today um, if you like my channel please hit the subscribe and the like button i really appreciate that also if you have any comments or suggestions i highly recommend those too <laughs> i really like to hear your feedback and i appreciate all my subscribers so any feedback would be wonderful um, today i'm going to show you the bargain bead box for april and i'm going to show you a couple of designs with that as well so thank you so much again for joining my channel and here we go sure of what's in the box and I'm going to start with the first one. It's a 23 by 35 chandelier focal point. Um, it's shaped in the moon. It's, it's very pretty. Um, very pretty. And the second one is a 40 millimeter floral pattern coin. The third item is 8 millimeter quartz round beads in lilac. Gorgeous quartz. Next one is a 1 meter of steel oval chain. Beautiful. Next one is 3 sets of brass oval box clasps and then we have these wonderful link chandelier and then we have these 10 pieces of filigree medallion findings which are absolutely beautiful they have really tiny holes so I'm gonna have to show you that um, then we have and there's a bunch of these 10 of them so that's perfect um, then we have these spacer beads and jump rings and then we have some rondelle small rondelle crystal beads three by two and that's a 16 inch strands very pretty and then we have this beautiful quartz donut pendant and we have a per shell pearls in um, violet and bumpy floral medallion and then we have these beautiful freshwater pearls in rice size it's um that's the shape it's a rice shape we have 20 pieces of seven millimeter six petal bumpy bee caps and we have earring brass head stainless steel shanks and then we have these head pins and we have these butterfly press glass in violet it's very pretty and then we have these crystal coin beads peacock color very pretty you can see purple and they're just really shiny and I like the size they're 10 millimeter they're kind of big then we have this seven inch strand of natural amethyst in fine faceted round um, it's very pretty this is a high quality natural amethyst I love this Okay, so here are some a great overview of the box again, and you know this a lot of these pretty, pretty lilac will go together. Uh, really love those pretty colors for spring. Um, we did get some, you know, light green. Maybe those will go well with those. And then I love these pearls. These these purple. At first, I thought they were just regular beads, but they're actually pearl. And then this kind of moon shape, um, it's a little bent, it's just easily bended, I'm sure. Um, beautiful pieces. I love these really pretty designs and these um, different links. They're just so pretty. You could do so many things, earrings. You can link a chain together. You could put them together like this. Maybe put a bead in between. And a bead at the bottom and there's so many things you can do with those and um so just opening one of the dream jump rings that it came with the package came with and gonna link them together just to kind of show you how easy it is just to link these together and it would look really pretty um and then maybe put like you know one drop on the bottom it could be a pearl it could be the quartz it could be you know, I like the pop of color, so the quartz may be really pretty. I think that would be a really nice touch. And um, so I'm just showing you how easy it is just to open the bead and put it together. Oh, I put it together the same. So that actually looks kind of cute too. So I'll do another one with their opposite directions just to kind of show you what that looks like as well. I think you'll really like that. So I think you know either way is great um, and you can use this in between the chain just cut the chain 
um, and put the jump rings on to kind of separate the chain out and then add a drop or pendant or something to the bottom would also make this really lovely. Um, so those are some great ideas. You could use the, the large round coin pendant at the bottom. So, so many different options. Um, love that. And I love these uh, small quartz. I just did some recent necklaces with that um, just by themselves. And they look really, really pretty. So, and it would look lovely with these pearls as well. Um, if you had two rows, one of the pearl, one of these crystals, I think that would be absolutely gorgeous. Um, so those are, those are real shiny. I love the way that they shine. And so all of these are so pretty and I can't wait to get started. So I started a tray here with the purple pearls and one of the basic designs with the purple pearls with beads in general, I should say, um, is to put three beads um, that are the same together and then use a spacer bead. And I like to sometimes just use a spacer bead and then put like a crystal, something that pops. Um, so that's what I'm going to do here. Um, I'm just trying different things to show you how I, you know, start my process and, and thinking here. <clears throat> <clears throat> but what I end up doing is, okay, so uh, here getting... I have the tray with the three pearls and I put the crystal um, between and I'm using a silver bead. On, it's kind of a bumpy bead on each side and I believe these came in the previous bargain bead box. Um, so you could use those and that comes out really, really nice. And I really like this design with the pearls. It looks really nice. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to wire this to chain. So I'm going to have chain and you'll see that in just a second here. I'm going to fast forward. silver from a previous bargain bead box. I'm going to use a crimp bead and put that on first. Um, I have this container of silver crimp beads in all these different colors. Um, I will link that this box down in the description. So if you're interested in getting all different colors in one little set, you'll have them all. It makes your life so much easier and organized. Um, to have this um, in one place um, comes with the crimp beads and the crimp covers. 
Um, again, it's on all different colors, brass, antique brass, antique silver, silver, shiny silver, and gold. Antique copper too. So as you can see here, I'm put on the crimp bead and then the, the end of the, the chain. Um, and I'm going to carefully crimp that on. This wire that I'm using is just a general wire. Um, it's a stainless steel, which is not very flexible. And one thing I would want to say is that um, if you have some good quality wire, um, usually I use um, some soft flex wire. I, I recommend that to make it a little bit more flexible. Um, and it would just flow a little bit nicer. So if you have that kind of wire, I highly recommend you use that. So as you can see, I crimped the bead. And now I'm going to put the crimp cover on it. And with these crimp covers, you they're kind of uh, firm metal. So I use my crimp cover my crimping tool which is uh, for a larger crimp and I think this is for a different type of crimping bead but it works for closing up these crimp covers really well and so I'm just kind of shaping the crimp cover um, so that it closes and it looks even so I just use these and I use the top the first round where they're both round on each side so I really like these I highly recommend if you are using the you know silver coated crimp covers using this tool just to close it up uh, i like using crimp covers to finish it you don't have to but it really makes a more finished look so now i'm just going to measure on the tray how long i want the chain to be and i'm going to measure on one side so on here, what I'm doing is I want one of the crystals to be the main focal at the bottom. And so I want to add more. I'm going to go ahead and add more um, crystals and pearls to this because I want one crystal to be the center. It just looks a little bit nicer that way. Is to always have it one in the center. So I'm doing that here really fast and then I'll measure the train So I've added those extra components and now I measured the, the length that I wanted on one side and I basically doubled that. And so now I'm going to go ahead and add that to the other side. And I realized 
you know, after I did this, that you can fit this over your head, but, you know, it kind of messes up the hair. <laughs> so if you want to not have to worry about messing up your hair, you can, what I end up doing is cutting the chain in half and then adding simply with the jump rings a lobster class to it so i'm just here straightening out the chain so if you don't want to do the you know adding a class to it just make sure that the chain is straight when before you put it on because you don't want a twisted chain um on there you want it to to be straight And then again, I'm putting on the jump ring. Just going to lay it out to make it easier. And also, I like to make sure that it looks correct. And that the wire is not too tight when I put it on. So that's what I'm doing here. Just making sure that it's not too tight and I keep it kind of round. Okay, so here I've pulled the cover on and what I'm doing is just making sure it's, again, it's not too tight and I'm gonna use some pliers and hold the wire that's uh, tight. Um, and then I'm gonna pull the other end so that it comes down closer. Sometimes with this wire it can be difficult to do that. So then I'm going to so I do that to get it closer to the pearls and then I'm going to go ahead and crimp that and put the cut off the excess wire having a little bit of difficulty getting it and then uh, there you go and I'm going to close the crimp cover using the second part of the pliers. I'm gonna cut this wire off, and what I do is kind of slide it down the long end and then get it as close as I can and cut it off. Uh, be careful not to cut the other wire. And I'm just trying to cut off any excess wire there. The other thing you could do is you could put it through the pearl, the first pearl, and cut it right at the end. And that basically hides it in the pearl. That's another option that you can do. And then I'm going to put the crimp cover on here. And again, using those special blue pliers that I have, I use the first round edge and just kind of make it round. You know, go around several times and just slightly um, bend it so that it's it's round uh, really makes it an even round so I like using this tool if I'm using the sterling silver beads it's really soft and so you don't need to use this I just use regular um, flat nose pliers and that's it and so here's what it looks like you know all one piece and it's ready to go from there, it looks really, really pretty. And you could just put it over your head. You don't need to have a clasp. But again, what I end up doing is, is end up putting. Hi everyone. So I am going to make a two strand bracelet or a three strand, I'm not sure quite yet. Um, and I basically took these beautiful, um, filigree type links here from the bargain bead box and put on a crimp bead and a crimp cover here <clears throat> and I love the purple that they gave us the beautiful amethyst uh, crystals they look beautiful and I had some smaller amethyst um, I also was thinking of this white um, crystal that they gave us in a previous box which is really pretty and would make the purple pop a little bit more <clears throat> so I'm trying to think of you know with this size link here if it's going to you know be big enough um, see how it kind of turns a little bit I think maybe two would be better so that way it kind of stays without bending too much so I'm going to try this out 
and <clears throat> first I'm going to start off with the beautiful, um, sorry for the background noise, the beautiful um, amethyst crystals, I mean quartz, and um, bead those on. <clears throat> I'm going to turn my other light on just so I could see a little bit better. It's a beautiful day so I could see the colors really nicely. Um, and so they just look really pop which is what I need to do. You try to do your jewelry when you make jewelry in the sunlight so you could see the real true color of the beads that you have. Sometimes in the different light, it looks uh, like a totally different color. And then later on you go, oh, I wish that wasn't the what I done. So I always recommend look at your beads first in natural light, um, see what goes with what, and then kind of pair those all together and then start your designing from there. So just taking a look at this, it looks really pretty like that. And now you could just do all one color, which is I probably what I'm going to do. But if you were to add one silver bead, um, a spacer bead in between there, either a silver, a sterling silver, or just a little um, bead like the one I have here. Now this is a, uh, it looks like a hematite coated bead and I think those came at one point in the bargain bead box. I'm not 100% sure I might have bought them somewhere but if you put that in between it, it does make it pop a little bit more or use one of the spacer beads. If you have a small spacer beads that's the same color as this um, brass here, this antique brass. So there's a lot of different options there that you could do. I'm just going to continue to do all of the amethyst colors. So I'm going to do that. Yesterday it was windy here. And so um, today I woke up and I have so many allergies. Um, I'm sure you, some of you out there have allergies as well and, oh, my eyes are itching and I'm all stuffed up and I took some allergy medicine this morning, but it takes a few, you know, a little while for them to kick in. <laughs> so if I sound a little bit congested today, that is why. <laughs> And, you know, I, in the past, I edited my videos and it just takes a really long time to go through the whole editing process. So I'm going to try my hardest not to edit too much. Um, and so if you have, hear a lot of background noise and you think that it's too loud, um, um, just let me know because, you know, I could definitely... Um, edit that. My husband is still here and um, so you can hear him turning off the shower and I try to do these videos first and then record later because he makes a lot of noise. <laughs> I don't know if it's just my husband that makes a lot of noise or you know <laughs> or what but <laughs> he tends to make a lot of noise. <laughs> The funny thing is, I, I always tell him, it's all about you, babe. I know, it's all about you. <laughs> so. <laughs> and if you don't want to sit through me beating these, you know, one by one, I totally get it. <laughs> Just fast forward a little bit, but I want to show you you know, there's more projects to come. So fast forward just a bit while I'm doing this and then you can see. Okay, so that's so pretty. That's gonna look really nice as a, as a cute little bracelet. Now the other thing that you could do with these, and I'm just realizing that this right now. And so <clears throat> if you are watching this, it is a good idea to watch the whole thing because I will give advice during the whole time. 
And as I'm, you know, think doing my beating, I, I just, these things pop up in my head and sometimes I forget. And so it's nice to be able to record it and, and let you share my ideas with you because I think you guys would enjoy these ideas. Um, so the idea that just popped into my head, if I'm looking at these cute little, these beads here, and I was able to fit the wire through here, and I'm just thinking that technically what you could do is you could put the wire through one hole here and then go through the back and put it out through the other side. So you really don't even need to connect it, but you could add it so that is more of the center part or and have two strands and you could put multiple ones. So I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna try that next so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so let me see how long this one is. This one is pretty close. <clears throat> I appreciate all your comments as well. Um, I did get a few comments to try to get it close to my hands and, and frame better. I try to, to look up. It's kind of high, the camera. I have my um, phone I use as a camera. And sometimes it's hard to see where it's at. But I, I will definitely try to do that. And... <clears throat> These are semi-precious amethysts. Uh, they did say natural. So these are semi-precious stones. And so you just want to let you know that's good quality. And sometimes when I get the good quality, I save those for my other projects that I use other semi-precious stones. And so you may want to do the same um, and make it more of a higher end quality bracelet. <coughs> Maybe use it with a sterling silver or silver plated. Um, for this particular project, I have a ton of amethysts um, <clears throat> on my own. So for this, I'm just going to use that. So you can see here now I'm going to, this is fitting like tight here, which is perfect for me because I'm going to add a clasp and that's going to make it like a perfect length. So that's how I usually measure it for mine. And I'm about a seven. So that's that one side. <clears throat> and so for right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use one of those wire holders, which I usually keep in the same spot. Of course, right now, there's that one there, though. So trick here. Uh, if you can't find it, use a paper, paper clip. I mean, a um, binder clip and works just the same won't come off i put it in the middle one in between as you can see works just as good all right so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to start the second wire on here and this looks like it'll be plenty of room so i'm just going to go through the next the little hole next to this one That's my husband. He's going to make him always watch. He's been playing in the guitar with his friends. So he's going to play guitar with his friends today. And I'm like, great. More quiet for me. I can get my videos done. <laughs> I'm going to close, but I don't want it too close because then there won't be any movement. Okay. 
sorry for the sniffling. These allergies are terrible. All right, so I crimped that on. Hopefully I was in frame there. If not, I'll make sure I will be on the next one. Okay, now I'm going to get a cover. Again, if you, I'm not sure if you've seen where to get these crimping ones. I got the, this package here that has all of the crimping tubes and covers for several different colors. And the link is at the bottom. If you're interested in, in getting this one, please use the link. It would help me greatly. <clears throat> if you use the link. Sometimes they get stuck together. Mm -hmm. I'm doing a video, honey. Sorry. You see how it's shaped? these pliers and I put it over the top where the crease is and smash it down so that it becomes more round again <coughs> and then that's perfect okay I'm gonna see what these white crystals look like and see how much space that it is. I'm going to do a couple more just to see. Okay. So that would work, but it just looks too bulky next to those. I think I'm going to try... I think I'm going to try the smaller ones. Sorry for the camera wiggling around. I had to step away for a second and I'm back. <laughs> so I decided that this does look really pretty, but um, I think I want to try to see if the chain will go through because the chain will look really nice. So we did get some chain, which I think you're going to love with this project. So um, I'm going to cut off the wire that I put on here and I am going to give a jump ring. Now they gave us a bunch of jump rings so we're covered there and I'm just going to use some pliers flat nose pliers and my crimping tool to open this wire, sorry, jump ring. Uh, problem I have here, it's not gonna fit. So, that being the case, I wish I did not cut off that wire, but we're going to have to find a solution, right? So here's what I'm going to show you the solution is going to be. It came with head pins. 
these nice thin head pins. I'm going to see if this fits inside the holes. It's pretty thin, so I'm crossing my fingers that it will. It does. Awesome. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I am going to create a jump ring. Okay, so here's what I'm doing. Is I made a circle. And then I'm going to cut it and I'm gonna hold my hand over here so it doesn't fly away because it flew away on me last time. Okay. Oh, I found the other one here. Okay, so when you cut it in half, you're basically cutting off the two ends and it leaves you with a jump ring. So, now that you have a thinner jump ring, you're gonna open it up. And we're gonna put one side through the circle hole of this spacer. just like that and then you're also going to put one part of the chain through then you're going to close that up and if it's not completely closed just take your flat nose and just kind of squeeze it together and this is pretty soft and sometimes I want to Put my flat nose and just flatten it to make sure it's not sharp like I could feel there's a little sharpness so what I'm gonna do is I'm just bending this one side inwards slightly so that it you can't it doesn't it's not too sharp so it's and it's a little off here so I need to close it and this is really soft wire so I could just use my hands Now, if it seems a little too sharp, which mine is, what I'm going to do, I'm going to open this up because we use the pliers. And so, open it up a little bit more. So before you put it on, I would suggest finding the one that's the sharp end because you're using these pliers which gives it a straight edge on one side but not on both is just clip the sharp edge off like that just the tip of it and then don't close it completely just enough so that it could pass it and so what you want to do is you want to make the jump ring pass it and then come back so that when you put it together, it's going to be, it's not going to want to move. So let me explain to you again exactly what I'm talking about so you understand. So when you cut off that little piece, it's going to make a space in between the two connections. And so what I want to do is, I'm going to show you with my fingers. Okay, so that there's, there's going to be a space. Pretend my fingers are the wire. And that space you don't want to have because it could make one of the ends slip out. So by having them open about this bit, this much, I push the wires so that they pass each other. And then all I'm doing is using that suspension type feel to it to not bend it back but just to kind of pull it this way so and a little bit back so that when it pulls together it's really more snug like that 
so that it creates that kind of closure that you want that's kind of tight. And that's how you make sure that there's a tight. If you squeeze the wires together like this, it's more likely going to bend your circle and your circle's not going to be straight and then you won't be able to keep this even. It'll kind of come out like this. So that's why I do it this way. I cross it this way and then I come back and I put them together this way. And that way you get a better seal with your jump ring. I hope that makes sense. Okay. So here's the, the two together. And what you could do is first make sure that you have the right size that you want. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is make sure that I have the right length. Okay. Since I'm going to show you this, okay, I'm probably going to have to attach this with a crimp bead and, and cover here. So it's going to stick out. So I'm going to take two links past this last bead and cut the bead after that. Because that will be the length of with where the crimp bead and the crimp cover will go from the purple one. The other thing I'm going to do is to keep these together. All you need to do is use one of the jump rings that it came with and provide a gathering, I want to say a third of the way twice. So I'm going to go ahead and put it over this part. I'm going to go ahead and put it over. Let me get back in the frame here. Sorry, guys. I'm going to put it back through here about a third of the way. Let me measure the chain here so that it's correct. Okay. So here's, hopefully you can see that. So this is about right where the chain is. And then this is the area of the beads. And so here I'm going to close that. Okay. Just to be a little bit. There we go. So that when you wear it, it's not going to separate as much. Okay. So now I'm going to take another third of the way about right here. Get a jump ring. Measure the chain. Okay. It's going to be right here. Hopefully you can see that. I'll keep checking the camera to make sure I'm in frame for you. Close that up, make sure that it's completely even and closed. Okay, that looks good. Okay. I really like that. It looks really pretty. So you could use the clasps that these came with, and I'm going to show you if you're not familiar with this type of clasp. What happens is, is it hooks on like this, 
and you take off like this, but basically you push it in. So mine came some separate and some together. So if it came all together looking like this, it basically squeezed the two ends of this that are sticking out and you pull it. And it makes it easy to get a bracelet or it, you know anything off and on by doing that. So you connect this end um, to the wire and that's how you do it. So you could use something like this. Um, I purchased a bunch of claw clasps and again I will post the link. These are from Amazon um, that I purchased it from. And so I'm just, I have all the colors I need here. So I'm just going to use one of these. And I'm just going to use jump rings. And with the other one, you would just use jump rings as well. Um, so the first jump ring that I would need to do is for this side. So I'll have to make another jump ring for the, for this uh, flower, kind of say, spacer bean. So first thing I'm going to do is use a crimp bead to attach one end to the lobster clasp. So here's my lobster clasp. I'm going to show you also how to add a few of the jump rings. And I put on this jump ring now I'm going I mean crimp bead sorry jump ring and I'm going to clip off the extra and close the crimping bead so basically the first time I use this last notch here to make like a V and then I use the second one to close it up and then I also you know sometimes it's still a little open at that point so i just use the tip of it to just press down and make sure it's closed as far as it can be closed and then i'm going to put a there's going to be a little space you know i make sure that there's a little space so that when you bend it it's going to be movable so i just want to show you like approximately the spacing on that so if you look at the the crimping bead you could see there's just a teeny bit of space get in frame here teeny bit of space in between that and that so when I put the cover it's going to take a little bit of space and there's going to be enough room there for it to be bend easily and not too stiff okay so now I'm going to get the crimp cover and since it's harder to get to this bead just going to go ahead and use the special pliers the crimp pliers for the that i have um, these are for a much larger crimp and so all i'm going to do here is i think these might be actually for a different type of crimp bead so i'm going to go ahead and close this oh, looks like it went sideways try not to do that <laughs> It happens, right? Well, I could just try to straighten it out a little bit. If I can't, I will take it off. 
just so you could see these things happen, you know. If you can't get the two sides straight, then the best best is just take it off and put a different one on. So you kind of just have to wiggle it until you can get it out. It got stuck on the end of what that. Can I? Now I took it off. You can see bent the wire a little bit. So I'm just going to straighten that out. Okay, I'm going to get another one that's straight. I'm going to put that on. And these crimp covers are kind of a hard, so you want to carefully close it slowly, like that, and then use these pliers to make it more of a circle and finish closing it. So, did a really good job there. Okay. So we've got that, that looks really good. So now what we're gonna do is get a jump ring and add that to the lobster clasp. So you just get one of the wrong pliers here. Jump rings that it came with, open that up. Put the chain on one side and then put it through the lobster clasp on the other side and then close that up. Okay, so that's ready to go. It looks really pretty. That's how it's going to look. I like that. Now you don't have to put the jump rings to hold it together. Um, they will stay together once it's on, but you could you could put them on if you want to. The other thing that you could do um, if you want to is you can make the chain go around it and then put one of these on and then it'll have a different look. Um, so you could make the chain go around and around and around um, until you get to the end and then put it on there. So that's a whole nother look that you could do as well. So these are just different you know, design ideas that I think you might like. So now all I have to do is put a jump ring on here. So to do that, um, I need to make a jump ring that's skinny enough to fit through that. So I'm going to take one of these head pins that came with the bargain bead box. Make sure it's straight just by kind of straightening with my hands. Cut off the little ball at the end. Okay. And then use some round nose pliers. I have these old ones. I have some other ones that are nice, but these work. Put it right in the middle. And you're gonna go all the way around and pass each other so that it looks like, get the focus. There you go. So it looks like that. No, it doesn't want to focus close up. It doesn't like me today. I'll take it off and then you can see. Here we go. So I went all the way around twice. And then I'm going to clip it in the middle. Hold on, put your hand around it because otherwise it'll fly away. And it's on the, see how it's on the end of the pliers there. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to open that up. And we're going to cut off the sharp edge. And you can see that it's sharp because it's shiny right on the edge of it. There's like a shiny... It's not going to focus for you. So 
just feel if you don't see the little shiny edge just feel for the sharp edge and then you're just going to clip that little edge off so that it's not sharp and then you're going to close the jump ring mine still looks a little sharp for some reason i'm going to cut enough and it probably didn't cut enough oops okay so now i'm going to bend it together and like i said before there's a gap here so i'm going to kind of push the two wires together next to each other until they're all close and then I'm going to close it up make sure that the jump ring is flush and sometimes I just like to use this and make sure that it's flat and not sticking out now if you have files metal files you could use that to also help with that just bending it down a little bit on the top here so that it's not going to stick out and then I'm going to turn it open it and I'm going to put that one side through let's see here there's not one directly in the middle, so you try to just get the closest one. Oh, oh that'll work. And I'm going to put this one through and find another jump ring. This is not all the way closed. And use one of the other jump rings to make it easier to attach the lobster class to. So I put on the end, and then I put on a jump ring, and I'm going to close this one up all the way just slightly open like that and this is the ring that we'll use to close and attach it to so there's that hopefully I'm trying to get this to focus better there we go and so that's how it looks so there's the one side. It looks really pretty. I like it with the chain. It looks really good. Thank you for watching my channel. Please hit the like button or subscribe if you would like to see more. Thank you so much.